Hello friends, it's Educator Katie, and we are here in Winston, the Hoffman's Food Toad Slash Habitat, here at Zoo Montana. Now today we're going to be talking about a lot of different things about sloths, because they're pretty cool creatures, and also a little bit strange. In particular, Winston, who is sleeping up in the corner to my left here, is a one and a half year old sloth. So he was born in about 2019, but in the wild, these sloths can live 10 to 20 years. And that means in good human care, like here at Zoo Montana, sloths can live 20 to 30 years or even longer. There's actually a two-toed sloth that lives in Germany who is 51 years old. So they can live a very long time. Now, you might have heard me mention two-toed sloths. There are six species of sloths, and they live throughout the rainforest of Central and South America. Now, one thing that all six sloths have in common is that they're part of something called the clade of Xenarthra. And this is a Greek mashing of two different words in a strained joint. Now, that strained joint actually refers to some of their vertebrae in their necks, which have more articulations or moving points than other placental or eutherian mammals like us. One of my favorite facts about sloths is that their closest relatives, other than each other, of course, are armadillos and anteaters. All three, sloths, anteaters, and armadillos, are part of that clade, Xenarthra. So they have that weird articulation, or at least their ancestors did, in their neck. Super cool. Despite being very different from each other, there are a few things that sloths, armadillos, and anteaters all share. For one, their teeth lack enamel, which is that hardened layer that goes over the rest of your teeth to make sure that they stay safe. Another thing that they share is that they have single color vision only. And finally, they all share that they have the lowest metabolic rate of any living placental mammal like us. That means that they don't have to eat very much food in the same amount of time that we would because their body uses less energy at the same time or the same rate. Now, again, Winston is a Hoffman's two-toed sloth. And in particular, this species is super cool. They are mostly nocturnal. They are also herbivorous, which means they eat plants. And here at the zoo, Winston loves to eat sweet potato, cucumber, squash, and even lettuce. For Hoffman's two-toed sloths like Winston, their range extends from southern Nicaragua through Brazil and Bolivia, which is pr a pretty wide range, and they live in the rainforest there. Now this is crucial because, again, they require a certain amount of humidity and heat, which is why here at Zoo Montana, Winston lives indoors. Because while our summers might be quite warm, it's not humid enough for him even in our nicest, most humid and warmest days in the middle of summer. And our winters are quite cold for Winston. In fact, the humidity in this habitat right now is 66%, much higher than what our normal, about 15% here in Billings at this time of year. So he much prefers it indoors here. Sloths also spend a majority of their lives both sleeping and awake upside down. Their fur grows in the opposite direction of most mammals, which means it grows downward. So if you've seen a dog's back, it's got the fur that grows down towards their belly. Sloths' fur grows the opposite because they're living life upside down. This fur also serves as a microhabitat for algae and other insects and other invertebrates, and it is so cool and so crucial in that rainforest environment. Living upside down not only allows them to be that microhabitat, but also helps them to avoid predators, especially the aerial ones like harpy eagles. Sloths are also surprisingly buoyant, and that means they like to spend some time in the water, which is why Winston has a pool in his habitat. Now, they don't just go swimming for the fun of it. Sometimes it's a matter of survival. The rainforest or coastal mangrove forest that meant most two-toed sloths inhabit are prone to something called seasonal flooding, which means sometimes of year, the water starts rising. So to get to different trees or a new habitat or even food, sometimes the sloths have to swim. In that case, they're not swimming upside down and throwing their arms backwards. They will be face forward and kind of dog paddling, but they can be quite adept at swimming. Now you might be wondering, being able to swim away in times of flood, being able to hide and camouflage with the algae in their fur, and being pretty slow that sometimes they're not even visible to most of the predators, what on earth could bother a sloth? For one thing, sloths are threatened by habitat loss and deforestation, including effects of climate change. Several factors that serve as population limiting factors for the Hoffman two-toed sloth include deforestation, agricultural activity, illegal poaching, illegal trafficking, and an increase in human settlements. One thing that you can do to help the sloths in South America is just making those eco-friendly choices in your life. All right, here's on to our next animal friend.